The Solar News team was in Giwan Eastern Samar when Typhoon Yolanda made its first landfall. Here with us is our reporter David Santos to share with us the team's experience during the onslaught of Typhoon Yolanda in the area. Good morning, David. Good morning, Emily. We're so happy to see you because for quite some time we didn't know where you were. What was it like when Typhoon Yolanda made landfall in Giwan? Yeah, we, we reached um, Giwan shortly before midnight of Thursday because we got information that instead of Borongan, uh, the information that was coming from Pagasa is that the landfall will be, made, will be, will be in Giwan. So we had to travel from Borongan. That, um, that itself, to travel alone, was kind of difficult because from then we could already get a sense, you know, get a feeling of how tough the, the typhoon would be. Mm -hmm. So by, by just by midnight, uh, we got to Giwan. We, well, the, the weather was kind of manage, manageable for us, meaning mm -hmm. we were still able to travel, we were able to look for a place to stay. Mm -hmm. But around 3 o'clock in the morning, that's mm -hmm. a Friday, things were really di were difficult. The video that we're seeing now, is this what it was on Friday morning? That was just, um, I think that was taken around uh, 7, 7.30 in the morning. So after People, the landfall. Unfold, after the landfall, after the most, maybe I could say the peak of the typhoon had hit uh, Giwan. Uh, what we're seeing here are, are people um, trying to check on relatives, on friends, on neighbors. And we saw several people coming out of their homes. Some were wounded. I can see, I see from that um, uh, people uh, were holding into their heads. Some were bleeding. Mm -hmm. Some had wounds in their feet, on their hands, and on different parts of the part, different parts of the body. These are residents who, may, who have op opted to stay inside their homes. Now, mm -hmm. there's a lot more, there were really problems for some of those who chose to evacuate it early on. Mm -hmm. we, we understand that, uh, we understood that some residents, many, quite a number, hundreds of residents in Giwan were uh, uh, evacuated, were moved to schools, to a gymnasium in that town for their safety. But apparently, sadly, uh, Ameline, at the height of the typhoon, these uh, uh, establishments, these buildings also caved in. Yeah. These also collapsed. So you can just imagine at the height of the typhoon, people were scampering uh, to, to different places, yes. trying to look for any, anything, anywhere that they could seek shelter on. You were, um, I heard, I, I think this is just the one inside the emergency room in the, in where you were at yeah. at that time, and you had to like hold the door yeah. just so it, the wind would not open it. Right. Because that strong it was it was really um uh, i could say I, I sh we should also be grateful to the residents of uh, giwan because uh, at the time when we left the pension house at three o'clock we were planning to go to the municipal hall because we thought that would be a safer place to go mm -hmm. uh, the government will be there uh, rescue teams will be there building i mean it would be a concrete structure mm -hmm. but we, people advised us against moving, traveling at that time. So we got into this hospital. This is mm -hmm. the Immaculate uh, mm -hmm. Conception Parish. Now what we are seeing now are, is, a, is, a, is establishment, just a few bl blocks from the hospital where we're staying. Mm -mm. Just after the typhoon, people were really hungry. People were mm -hmm. desperate. People were mm -hmm. frustrated. People were uh, didn't, didn't know what to do. So anything that they could find on the road, these are goods that were, you know, just laid out there, mm -hmm. I mean, just after the typhoon hit. So yeah. people just took anything that they can, most especially food, because uh, they, they had anticipated that hours for after the typhoon, they had nowhere to uh, buy, uh, get food. So some of them began, you know, taking all this stuff. And the, this was like, uh, this video we're showing now is, I think, uh, was taken just uh, a few, I mean, around 7, 7.30 in the morning when the typhoon was kind of slowing down. Uh, we, we, we had, this is the school I'm referring to. This is what's supposed to be the a evacuation, evacuation center. center. But you can, wow. you can see from the footage, I mean, there's nowhere you can see people could, you know, seek shelter mm -hmm. on. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we were in Pablo last year, Typhoon Pablo in Katiil. Mm -hmm. um, oh, how, how do you compare it with? Typhoon ah, Pablo's it's it's, it's, it's Katiil all over again, but much, much more. As Secretary Almendras was saying, it's much more uh, this, the, the, the intensity and the, the breadth of the damage and the devastation mm -hmm. was so much, much wider. And mm -hmm. uh, I could just imagine uh, how helpless we were. I mean, mm -hmm. to see all these people. Uh, find somewhere they can hide, they can seek shelter. On. And you said that even hours after all this happened, there was no help or relief right. coming to them. 
Right. So the hopelessness of the people that the, how they were feeling at that time must have been magnified. Right. Um, when, 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 when all these events were unfolding before us and we can see all the, the desolation, the frustration, the pain, I mean, the people suffering, the hunger, mm -hmm. we all, we, people in G1 then thought that these, the, the incident, that the, the, the impact of the typhoon was just, uh, just within mm -hmm. G1 because there was no contact, there was no power, there's no information what's going on outside, there's no way we can send information outside from what had happened to G1. So people then were thinking, uh, it, it, they Nobody were the ones only suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, um, so then the next day on Saturday, uh, we were still all hoping that choppers would be flying mm -hmm. in. I mean, anything, trucks, Some aid. Gov yes, uh -oh. aid would Some be help. coming in. Government, mm -hmm. government from outside Giwan would be exerting effort to come in. But I, I, I will tell you, Ameline, when we travel, when they decided to travel from Giwan to uh, Tacloban, uh, because we thought that things were really getting hopeless. We passed through around 10 towns, and on, on these 10 towns, from Giwan to Tacloban, the situation was all the same. Mm -hmm. uh, each and every town had ravaged homes. The, the roads had all top, toppled uh, electric and power, I mean, uh, communication posts, uh, uprooted trees, mm -hmm. debris all over. It was really hard to navigate through the roads. I mean, what was normally uh, a three to four hour drive from G1 to Tacloban, it took, it took us out 16 hours. 16 hours. hours. You and rode we, a motorbike, we right? took the motor. We took uh, three motorcycles. I mean, it, it, it's a good thing that some residents of G1 volunteered to drive for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, we had to carry the motorcycles from each and every three electric posts that we had to pass through just to be able to cross over and get to Tacloban. And back then, we thought we could get help from Tacloban because we needed to bring, I mean, the send the word out yeah. that what is happening on Giwan. But apparently, when we reached Tacloban, we were shocked. We were in disbelief. We were, uh, we were, I mean, we were, we did not expect that Tacloban was also would that mm -hmm. would incur so much damage as well. So we, we just, we just hope. I think the government is so, is really. Um, uh, there's so much things to be done in Tacloban mm -hmm. that even before they could reach to Giwan, mm -hmm. they had to pass through many towns. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how help can get reached to Giwan. Is, has, has help reached Giwan by now? Or, or can they be contacted there? I, I, I was able to speak to DND spokesman, uh, Dr. Peter, Gar Bar Peter Galvez, yesterday. They were exploring the possibility of, well, firstly, there are only two options available as, as, as we speak because some of the roads leading to Tacloban were badly damaged. So there's no way uh, land travel would be mm -hmm. possible unless you take the motorcycle. But mm -hmm. we cannot that will take, take so long. So they they're taking the possibility of uh, the, using the Navy, the mm -hmm. Coast Guard, and through aerial uh, mm -hmm. uh, transfer of goods. Now, they're also thinking, Dr. Galvez, quoting Dr. Galvez, he was saying that they might consider asking the help of U.S. and other countries to assist in transporting all these goods because there's, the devastation was so massive outside Tacloban. Uh, mm -hmm. We have to realize that, that, that Tacloban, while well, we understand that Tacloban is among the hardest hit, I, we saw ta the situation in Tacloban mm -hmm. yesterday. It was hell. I mean, uh, we see dead people lying mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. and the, 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 the devastation was also massive. But we, we must also remember that there are so many other people mm -hmm. relying for help. There is no sense of order at this time. There's mm -hmm. no government. There's no, I mean, the local officials, we were asking, what are they doing? Who's in charge? Uh, the local officials were saying, we too are victims ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's so, so much that we can do. Mm -hmm. So there is really the need for somebody, for some people to go to these towns and take over and intervene. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, did, the, did, the, did the DND say when they will be able to do that? Well, they were they are working on it. I uh -huh. understand the president was in Tacloban yesterday. He mm -hmm. had a meeting with, a series of meeting with local officials there mm -hmm. and I think they're working on that idea. So David, yeah. you know, um, we can only just imagine what you had to go through at that time considering this is not the first time right. that you've been reporting yeah. um, in a disaster area. How do you feel? When I first saw you, I was really relieved because we really Thank did you. not hear anything yeah. from you. We, we tried to, we even tried to contact the 8th ID, but nobody could contact anybody from that area. And for a while, we didn't hear anything. How did it feel, especially Samar, considering that particular area, they're used to typhoons. Yeah. They're used to this, uh, this kind of right. weather. 
right. Mm -hmm. But what did they say about oh, this one? Well, we, 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 they, well, we were there days before, no? I mean, a couple of days before the typhoon hit uh, Samar, and we were speaking to some people there. And then, uh, yeah, that's the same thing that they've been saying. Uh, we're so used to this typhoon. It's, um, we've been in the typhoon area of the country for so long. Oh, the last time we experienced a really tough one was in the 80s. Uh, they were mentioning typhoon Ruping. Yeah. Uh, but since then, um, they have they, they have the sense of you know sense of preparedness, but not as much as, but not as prepared as what had happened now. I mean, uh, they they are all in unison saying this is the worst ever. This mm -hmm. is the biggest, the strongest, mm -hmm. and they, they never expected this to happen. But we are we are sorry that um, we have made some people worry. But. Uh, but our concern there, when we decided to leave uh, Pakloban, I mean, rather Giwan, because everybody was telling us, uh, some people were telling us, discouraging us to travel because mm -hmm. there's no way that we could pass through the road. We were thinking that we just have to wait until the roads were cleared. But no, we decided to move out and just tell everyone we're OK, mm -hmm. and we just need to bring word out on, mm -hmm. on the situation in Giwan. Did you also see a lot of dead bodies sprawling in the streets? And how, how is Giwan compared to Tacloban City? Right. Um, the good thing about um, uh, Giwan is that uh, the dead were somehow, uh, well, I think we could see people hel helping each other. Uh, people were helping if they, they, there were dead people recovered from a wreckage site, a mm -hmm. house that had collapsed or a structure that had collapsed. People would help each other and then they, they are, they know, there's no embalming. There are no funeral service, uh, funeral parlor services there. People, I mean, the dead are just immediately brought to the to the cemetery and just wow. buried immediately. Like what, what we, we saw in the now? report, it's mass mass burials. Yeah, right. So is that mm -hmm. what's happening is there that as well? One? That's that's uh, this is a story of a of a of a family living in a coastal village uh, at the height of the typhoon. They did not uh, leave the area. Um, you must remember that when the typhoon hit uh, Giwan, uh, it was really dark. Mm -hmm. There was no power. Uh, it was around uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, you know, debris uh, flying. Yes. Were, were flying. I mean, it was flying. So some of them were actually knocked down yes. by these debris, debris and then fell into the sea, then drowned. Some of the, the, the beach we, we saw earlier yes. was a family that, were, that was recovered from the sea hours after the typhoon had hit. Mm -hmm. And then they just, just brought to the, to the cemetery and just buried immediately. And the link, I may just add, there, another concern for Giwan is that Giwan is surrounded, well, it has at least four island, 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 islands in that, in that town, all facing the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. By the time we left by Saturday, there's still no word yet on what had happened to people living it's there. Living One there, island right. there is Homonhon. Mm -hmm. Homonhon Island, it has eight barangays. So we, we, quite a number of people living there. Uh, Giwan is the second uh, most populated uh, town in eastern Samar after Borongan City. So uh, it is a very popu populated town. Mm -hmm. And Humonhon is one of the more populated uh, areas in, in eastern Samar. So there's no word yet yeah. on what had happened so what to these islands. So what you're saying, these coastal uh, uh, barangays that were by the Pacific Ocean, there's no word. We don't know where these families are. No. And like what we saw in the video earlier, that's an example of just one family that right. was taken out of the water because right. they were... Did, did they know that um, they were supposed to evacuate? Um, yeah. Um, we were, well, I was able to speak to the... Uh, the name I cannot recall just this, this, this very moment, but I was able to speak to the municipal disaster... Res, municipal disaster official of Homon, mm -hmm. of, of Giwan on Thursday night before we moved to Giwan. He was in Homonhon Island because he was working on people try, uh, needing to move to, mm -hmm. to, the, to, to the mainland. Because they, 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 he, uh, the officials understood that these people can, can be unsafe. But mm -hmm. what happened was there were there are a lot of women and children that were moved to the mainland. Mm -hmm. A lot of their men stayed on in these islands to secure their houses. I mean, as commonly mm -hmm. practiced mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. many of our, of our Kababayans, no? okay. uh, they leave the men to stay in their homes, to secure their homes at the time of disaster. They let the women and children and the old people uh, go to the evacuation centers. So as of this time, we don't, there's no communication. 
uh, they are asking the Coast Guard and the Philippine Navy if they can go to Giwan and go to these islands. I, I have to mention some of these islands. Manikani Island, Kubabaw Island, Victory Island, Sulu Suluan Island, and Homonon Island. These islands need to be checked, need mm -hmm. to people... Uh, uh, I mean, authorities have to see what had happened to this because we are, there is it's, we have no idea. There are reports of dead, but these are re are, are unverified. We are just all speculating. But you know, there's so much there's there's, there's great concern for people living in these islands. Okay. Lastly, um, David, again, can you mention those islands for authorities right. to check on? That's very important. Right. Uh, well, Homonhon is the biggest island. It, it has eight barangays. Then there are. There are four other islands. These are Manikani, mm -hmm. Kubabaw, mm -hmm. uh, Victory, and Suluan. These are all within uh, uh, the jurisdiction of Giwan Town. Okay. Well, thank you so much, David yeah, Santos, David. for giving us all this information. And I'm sure it must have been um, something else for you to be there and experience and right. see all that. Can I just add one more? Sure, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what is This it? is something I, I'm holding here quite some notes. Messages. Uh, messages. These are coming from residents of Giwan. Yeah, They've yeah. been uh, they asking to, to call their relatives uh, okay. everywhere nationwide just to assure to them that all right. they're all right. All right. They just just some Go points ahead, I would like to mention. Um, uh, basically, what they're asking are food, mm -hmm. water, uh, medicine for I mean wounded people. I mean that anti tetanus. Uh, medicines and also formalin and they're mentioning about ATS or, or I mean these are for the dead okay. so these are the four basic things that they need now of course it would help if they can bring in tents and mm -hmm. temporary shelters but basically they need food water uh, formalin, uh, formalin for the medicines. dead and medicines for the wounded anti tetanus anti -tetanus. And probably anti leptospirosis right. as well yeah. okay mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's I it. That's it. We'll okay. we we be, like we we be calling these numbers ah, to right. to, uh, as part of our public service to ensure yeah, yeah, the, the people, I mean, the family outside Gi want uh -oh. to assure that must be those who have enough. left messages for us will assure them that they are okay. 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 Thank you so much, David. Thank you, David.